I'd like to welcome everyone to the technical breakout session with our sponsors, Vortex, and introduce um, two speakers who will be giving us some pre technical presentations. And, um, we have Herman Delgado, who is the commercial director, as well as Andrea Ramirez, the business developer for Latin America. Muchas gracias, Rodríguez. Over to you. Hola, buenos días a todos. Um, empezamos ya, pues, Emerson. Perfecto. Pues bueno, muchas, muchas gracias. Um, bueno, vamos a presentar una, un trabajo técnico. Estamos contentos de poder participar en Colombia en la Colombia Wind Power por primera vez y vamos a ver si en lo que viene podemos eh, viajar hasta allí, que estaría muy bien. Eh, vamos a presentar un, un, un trabajo técnico uh, de calibración de, de datos de, de mapas de viento. Y en primer lugar, mi, mi compañero Andrés Ramírez, a uh, quien algunos de ustedes quizá ya conozcan, porque es el desarrollador de negocio para, para la TAM de Vortex. Eh, nos hará una pequeña introducción eh, de Vortex para ponernos en contexto y seguidamente yo pues entraré en detalle en, en lo que es la metodología técnica de, del método que vamos a presentar que se llama Remodeling. Adelante, André. Thank you so much for joining us. Great, thank you so much. So we're going to be just part of this technical discussion. This is the very first time that we are in Colombia Wind Power and we are very happy, but well, it would have been better, better if we would have been able to travel all the way there. So we're going to be talking about this wind map calibration. That's the type of exercise that we're going to be doing. I also have Mr. Nieto, who is also the developer, the business developer, Andre Ramirez for Botax. He's going to be giving a brief Vortex presentation just to just have a little bit more context. And later on, I'm going to be addressing the technical methodology of this method that we are going to present, which is remodeling. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. So as Herman was telling you today, we are going to just have this technical validation of one of our products. Well, just to give you a little bit more of a background, Vortex is working with this remodeling and reanalysis through our WRF or WARF model. We ask you to please stay while we get our audio. So we got it back. So we were talking about the product that we are using for this presentation. We have this FART product for this horizontal extrapolation. A lot of people in Latin America use WAS through a climate station for them to be able to have this type of open field. In our FEM product, we use this WORF methodology, which is part of our model, to address several equations from the atmosphere. And we also use, I do not know if you are able to see this methodology and how we reanalyze this. This is a type of land. We use this type of points for us to be able to just get it to this high resolution field up to 100 to 30 meters. Then we have a post processing part that we can run in this product. We can go to Volna Herman according to our remodeling strategy, which is just through all of these meterings and measurements that we can do. And we can just connect all of this high resolution methodology. So, Germán, I do not know you would like to address this. We also 
have a let's say deeper session in terms of our products and in terms of our technologies and resolutions and zooming approach that we use in Vortex and you're going to be able to see this in our stand at 1.30 p.m. That's according to Columbia's time. Great, thank you, Andres. Thank you for your presentation. As Andres has already mentioned this, well, Vortex is a wind power estimation tool, and our main commitment is for us to be able to just conduct this wind power estimation without having to, let's say, use this measurement. So what we do is that we just have consistent, robust estimations globally, particularly in Colombia. And well, in case we have this type of, let's say, actions or measures, these are going to be very useful for us to be able to minimize the uncertainty of this model. So more specifically, what we're going to have in this method is the remodeling method and that we use particularly on our high resolution wind power. We have this farm. This is a map that it has 100 up to 30 meters of resolution. It all depends. And what this remodeling do what this remodeling does is that it just corrects the end output according to the WRG format that we use. So we are talking about this calibration method. We also have other types of methods that are simpler. We are going to address them as well. And we have this horizontal extrapolation methods, whether horizontal or otherwise. So our starting point is the fact that all models, micro, macro scale, mesoscale, mass models, all of these models are to some extent uncertain. That means that they have some sort of error. They are not perfect. Models are good, but not perfect. That's what we mean here. And that imperfection is translated into that. Well, the very main one is a bias on the mean speed. And these models also have some issues when just really showing this extreme phenomena, whether as events and calms. And also we have this type of shakes or ramps and very, very severe ramps. And also this model is also, according to this k Weibel parameter, we know that this is somehow giving us some sort of idea on what is the distribution of this Weibel. And it is key for all of these production parameters and also our wind direction, which is for all of this direction. All of this is key, is very important in case we have some sort of actions or measures for us to be able to start calibrating all of this. So, how can model results work according to this horizontal extrapolation? Usually the temporary series is not entirely used. What we do is that we use tabs. We have the compression, the collapse of this through this wind direction, and then we just correct this output, which is this WRG or a condensed format. And this has, of course, advantages and disadvantages. The advantages are quite Evident we are using tabs and that means that everything is more portable, everything is faster and everything is going to be just quicker. And with this temporary part has this disadvantage where this estimation times are going to be higher and this in the eyes of the industry is going to just be part of this collapsed images and as part of all of this. So 
I can tell you that one of the main advantages of this method is the use of this temporary series, everything that we do, and all of these temporary records that we may have. We do have advantages, the fact that we have compressed data and information, well, all of these may have been solved because, well, we are able to use this and we may have two towers as part of one same project, depending on the type of tower that we're using. And of course, also this is going to entail an issue and second issue would be the use of uh, this tabbed or tabulated data is according to the number of sectors in this wind direction. Of course, this is going to also take us to this, let's say, this division, either 12 or 36 sectors, all of that is going to have an impact. And then we have other types of events that are part of this, uh, where we have this point is And the third problem is the vertical issue and vertical profile. Well, we may have one height or two heights, and then we may need to conduct this approximation. Well, we have this type of solutions because, of course, we also have what we call this mesoscale model. and this also includes all heights, so the model is now just somehow developing a profile for us to be able to do all of this. So, just to summarize, these temporary points are going to lead us to this poor or bad temporization or synchronization as part of this model data. This is going to be addressed by using or by adding this is part of the calibration process, which is what is going to tell us through this remodeling process. So what is this approach? What, what is this method like and what do we do? Well, we think about, uh, let's say, horizontal and uh, all of the elements of a wind meridional, for instance, all of the breakdown of these movements, it is quite complex when it comes to calculating and estimating. The main purpose is to avoid Weibull fittings in our direction and also, like I said, just also time-dependent correction and therefore that these correction factors depend on what we have. Obviously, we're going to use these through certain points at different heights. So another observation that we may have is, well, various periods, maybe three years. This is something that we're going to see in the long term as well. So let's say that we have a project plan and that we have, let's say, two towers at different heights and with different measurement periods. This method consists of different steps. The first step, obviously, is to standardize these measurements. And we, I think that we need to see them in the long run. We are talking about 20 years. And I think that it's a series of, let's say, numbers of reference for us to be able to extend that and I'm going to explain that later on and also what we wanted to do was to use this worth model for us to be able to calculate the wind field. We have a worth to 100 meters and then to 30 meters and in each step and then we're going to have the output of the U and the V and these are the horizontal components and later on we're going to calculate these correction factors for us to be able to get data or the corrected data from these towers from this model and lastly we are also going to use those corrections to this model output so 
how do we get into this long term? We're going to use a series of vortex in references and we're going to use a very specific MPF model. This is a long term model that we also have as part of this, but this is also part of a series and then this method is quite standard and it consists of comparing this periods that match this model output and this leads to this statistical correlation and then we can use the statistical correspondence to the long-term model so following that like I just mentioned and as Andre has already mentioned we're going to have this warp downscaling high resolution this is going to be the power for us to be able to estimate this wind field and what we're going to be using for this correction and once we have these two towers that have been corrected for 20 years then the output of the model where we're going to calculate are these correction factors for each speed direction u and b so i would like to insist on the fact that we're going to have a correction factor for each point as well this is very important and well usually these traditional models what they do is that they correct this mean speed and this is what we do what we do is that we correct every time step and well all of these correction factors are going to be part of this space and part of this time as well so once we have also just developed and used this factors we're going to use this wind masks for us to be able to get into this corrected wind field here we have an example of the output of the model and the area that has been corrected we have introduced variable temporal one, a much more realistic scenario. We don't see hor horizontal patterns due to the proximity of the tower. And a um, very important consequence is that we obtain the wind change and modify the parameter as well. As I have said, all of this would be impossible if we use various correction modifying only the medium uh, speed method has been validated it was not easy or direct because at least we had to have two areas in each of the locations Obviously, we had uh, 15 locations with two towers at, at the different distances with different periods of time, one and two, different heights to consider different scenarios. We also use one of the towers to make calibration. Uh, horizontal and the other one to validate. This is a summary of the outcome. We have a document where we specified with much more dis detail other metrics. However, we can see the average and well ball um, we have a better outcome. Uh, summarizing then we can say that the method improves considerably the wind field uh, when we have the original output and we have the corrected one compared we can have better outcomes then we don't observe patterns of ways that are unrealistic even we can improve wind and this is essential for the production field. Well, this is it 
Thank you so much. I don't know if you have any questions. I believe there will be. And well, that's it on my side. Consider that remote can be used. I have been telling about this measurement because not usual, but we can also you do use data coming from other sources. We can use remote data. <laughs> 